We're going to take an updated look at this scenario today. We're beginning with four characters. Now, we've got Sveta, we've got Pavel, we've got Anton, and we've got Slatter. Now, Sveta and Anton, they're probably the two weakest characters in the game. So no real advantage having them in the household. Now, Slatter is good at maintaining morale. Now, that only really comes into play if we have people who are either sad or depressed, and she's good at talking them up. So we don't anticipate getting into that situation anyway. Pavel, he's fast. Now, all that means is that he's, he's good at getting around larger locations quickly, which is more a convenience than anything else. So it's not a particularly strong team here. But, um, and of course, with four people, we've got four mouths to feed, which is likely to be the issue. So let's get to it. Um, firstly, we have this house. There are three or four different types of house. We've got this one. And with four people, what we need to do is just keep get people busy. So we're going to get him digging there. We're going to get her up here. She can't go that way because this is a four store and you can only get in that way. So she needs to go up here. And we'll get Slatter digging there. So that way everybody's busy and we can forget about them in the short term. Now, Pavel, he's going to run around picking loose piles, which are all along this floor here. We're provided with this basic workstation down here and what we want to be doing is picking up all the piles here so that we can get the materials to put in a metal workshop which is pretty much the first stage in any playthrough. But we'll pick up these five piles first. So this door needs to be forced as does this one here. Now we just picked up a lockpick and all these icons appeared here which tell us that these doors or closets can be opened with a lockpick. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five of them and we are not going to find like five lockpicks. So the first stage, the first thing we need to do, as mentioned in pretty much every playthrough, is put in this metal workshop and then make a crowbar because we can also use a crowbar to get it through these doors and into these closets. So Anton's finished there, so he can now pick up these two piles over in the corner here. Slatter's finished, she can keep digging. Try that again. Sveta's finished up there, she can force this to him. Now Pavel's finished the metal desk, so now we can make the crowbar. And that will allow us to get into all these doors here. Crowbar also acts as a weapon. We are going to get raids at night time. Uh, not on the first night, but after the first night we are liable to be raided at any time. And initially we're not going to have any weapons for our characters. But the crowbar does act as a weapon. So it's one of the most useful items that it both gets us into all of these places, but also acts as a weapon for our household. Now, Sveta can, this icon just opened up here, which is, tells us we can now crowbar this. So she can crowbar this and now start digging this pile, which keeps her big busy. Uh, we'll get Anton down here. In the meantime, Pavel can get back to the workshop and start making some beds because we have four people and the only way to manage the sleep schedule with four people is two beds. Otherwise it's quite, yeah. I'm not sure if it's impossible or just very difficult, but we need two beds, I think. So let's get that done. Sveta can keep digging up here now. That's her busy again. Anton can crowbar this. That's Slatter done. She can get down and crowbar this now. Anton could start digging. So that's Anton and Slatter busy. Apple can finish this bed here. I 
right, that's pretty much everything that we can do. Now, one other thing, the next thing we would want to do is to upgrade the workstation here. And I think we have enough materials. Yeah, we do. There are two allowable upgrades to the workstation, so um, we want to get both of them in as soon as possible. So that's Pavel done. Now the other two are starting to get through their piles. Now the day ends at 8 p.m. and by then we will have got to these corner piles here, this one and this one. Because we are going to find two meds in the house. We haven't found any right now, so that kind of tells us that there's one here. It's either going to be a bandage or a bottle of pills. And there's going to be the other one here. So which one's this? That's the bandage. So it tells us the bottle of pills are going to be in here. And if we look at our characters, one of them is going to be sick, because in this scenario, one of them always starts out sick, and that's Slata. So we're going to get her up to the med station, because we have a choice. We can either give her meds, or we can gamble and not give her meds. Now, if we don't med her up, I guess a couple of things can happen. There's going to be no change in the next day. She can get worse, she can get better. But if she gets worse, uh, this is the second stage of sickness. You've got slightly sick, and then you've got sick, and then you've got severely, and then terminally. Now, um, so sick isn't, it's kind of the medium level, and it's not a good place to be, but if we got to severely sick, that would be a really um, big hole that we would need to dig ourselves out of, because we would need multiple meds on back-to-back -back days. So it's probably a good idea to med her up, these are the stronger pills. You've got the um, for sickness. You've got these pills here, the bottles, and you've also got these herbal meds here, which is this icon. So the herbal meds aren't quite as effective, but the pills usually work. So we'll get her to sleep anyway. It says recovering when they're in bed. I'm not sure how true that is, but she should be back to slightly sick tomorrow, which is a much better place to be than sick. And 8 p.m. end of the day. Now, there are also six standard maps, and we've just been dealt this one. And um, we've got these three locations. Now, we've got this uh, trader called Franco, who comes typically days three, six, and nine every three days. And he can come as early as day two if we're really unlucky. And um, what happens when he comes is we want to buy all of his components and wood, because that's they are the two main ingredients in pretty much everything that we want to build to improve the house. And uh, the decrepit squat, that's got a lot of components, a lot of wood, so it's a lot of materials there, but there are no meds and there's also no food there. So that's um, that's the issue there. Ruined block of flats, it does have food we could bring home, but that's not essential right now. What we would really need is the meds for trading. And uh, the meds there are all behind a saw blade requirement. We don't have any saw blades, so we can't go here and get meds. We can't go here to get meds, and we've only got the bandage to trade with. Here in the garage, there is a trader. Um, now, we will get a morale bump if we take a med there to trade with him, because he tells us that his, um, his father is sick, and that if we trade a garret, sorry, if we trade a med there, then uh, we get a morale bump as well as being able to get some stuff back in return. But that leaves us with zero meds for when Franco comes. But we can buy saw blades here. So the idea here is that we go here first, take a bandage such that we can buy saw blades, and then we would be able to go here and get access to the meds. So that's what we would want to do. So let's um, go with that plan. So um, these have a backpack of 12. So it's going to be either of these two. Now he's faster getting around locations, so it makes sense to go with him. So we'll sleep these two. Actually, no, we'll sleep her because she's sick and uh, sleep him. Now, Sveta, we're not going to get raided, so it doesn't really matter, guard or sleep, um, because get him back to sleep. Because we'll sleep her tomorrow anyway, but uh, so we just leave her on guard, it makes no difference. And let's go to the garage, and preparation, we need to take the med, our one remaining med, so that we get the morale up. And hopefully he's got at least one saw blade. He's going to have between one and five. 
and uh, one's going to be a disaster, five more than we need, ideally three, minimum three. The only other thing we could do here is potentially take the diamond. Um, I don't think we need it, but let's just go with the uh, bandage, see where, see where that gets us. So first thing is just pick up, I've got a couple of loose piles here, let's just pick up this one. Because what we're going to do is just move everything into a pile here at the bottom of this ledge. And we're just going to consolidate everything into there. So it just means opening the backpack, dropping any one item, which creates a pile. And then we can just dump stuff in there. Now I'm going to keep a little bit of wood on us because he will take wood trade. It's just a question of how much we can get for the bandage that we're about to give him. So we do get... Okay, he's got four. Now that's um, as many as we could hope for, but he doesn't have a hatchet. That's the other item that he could potentially have a trade, which is a shame. So let's go one, two, three, four. Fine, we have a deal. And balancing item one of those. So that is a really good find because now we can go to the ruined block of flats and get the meds but we're also could be going to be having other locations open up that require saw blades. So this means that we don't need to make the station. We don't need to upgrade the metal workshop to make saw blades in any great hurry. So let's deal there. Now we're going to need one of those saw blades immediately in this location. Let's just dump everything back off here, pick up the one saw blade we need, and jump over here. <clears throat> now we're allowed to run across here. Uh, we've got three piles along the top here, and here's the saw blade requirement here. So this is an allowable area back here. That's his father there. Matey kind of hangs out there. And there's a bunch of piles back here that we can pick up that are not stealing starting with these two down here. Now, if we wanted to steal, we could have brought a lockpick and gone through there and got access to these two piles here, which are the stealing piles. Now, there is a problem stealing from this location and that it gets a little bit complicated because if you steal from here once, what you can find is that you come back and maybe pick up something from a pile like this, which is not stealing. And it tells you when you get home that you've just stolen again. You get multiple uh, morale hits. Which is... Um, so it means that if you steal from here, it's kind of a one-time visit and you don't come back. But we are likely to want to come back here for trade. Because Métis is one of the few traders that trades... Well, that sells both um, potentially hatchets, saw blades but also electrical parts. So he's a very tr um, handy trader to have, which is why we don't want to lose him, so we're not going to steal. Now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to ferry everything over here and just dump everything into this pile here. I'm also going to, I think we left some goods here as well. And then I'll see you once I've got everything consolidated into this one pile right here. Just getting back with our final load now. So everything is now consolidated into this one pile so that we can decide what to take from here. Now, one thing I want to do before we go, if we just look at, uh, we bought, I think one or two, yeah, we bought one water before. Now water is um, pretty expensive to make and that you need filters and you also need a water collector. So what I'm going to do is see how much water we can buy because we picked up a bunch of things there that we aren't going to be wanting to take home. So I just want to see how much it's going to cost us for nine water, because then we'll have a full stack. Sorry, slight discontinuity there. Dog was barking, had to deal with it. So what we want to do here is we want to see if we can use any of this stuff here to buy nine water, because then we can go back with a full stack. Now, I think we can. It's just a question of... Um, these uh, quality roll-ups are quite expensive, and then we can normally, not quite there, I won't do try harder, 
and we have a deal. So I think we'll go there because now we've got a full stack of water because um, we can be short of water at the beginning of the game and a full stack of 10 will help. It means that we've uh, that covers our first cooking requirement. So we definitely want to take these. Uh, we want to take the water. Now, when we get back, we have upgraded the workshop. Um, we're going to want to be thinking about security. And the first stages of security are boarding up windows. Now, boarding up windows, each window we board up is going to cost us two components. And it's going to cost us 10 wood. Now, I did notice that we picked up a lot of components. So that is not a requirement. Um, but I don't know how much wood we've got and how many boards we can get in. So I'm going to take just wood with that in mind. Parts would be good, but we don't have a full stack. Full stack is four. And uh, just as a rule, try not to carry half stacks. That's a half stack. Full stack is four. This is a full stack, but we don't need books. So we're going to go here and um, see where that gets us. Morning of day two, and Pavel is back from the garage. So we've got a couple of things to look for here. Firstly, um, now he's tired. He needs to get to bed. Now, she recovered from sick to slightly sick, which is good. Um, we're going to leave her in bed all day, I think. The other two, if you just look at Anton. Now, Sveta's tired, but what we'll do is we'll switch her over with Pavel as soon as he wakes up. Characters need five hours to go from tired to not tired, or to go up one level. And uh, he got in bed by seven, so by 12, he'll be up. We can put her to sleep, and because the day ends at 8 p.m., then she'll get her five hours as well. So that way, everybody is rested by the end of the day. Now, next question is, um, day two. We are likely to see a raid tonight. Now, we have four house members, so we can put two people on guard. But it's very likely that... Um, sorry, not him. We want Anton. It's very likely that we are going to need to board up some... Remember, we brought back a lot of wood um, from the garage last night. And it means that we can put three boards in. So I think we're going to do that. And then with two guards, we don't have to worry about any potential woundings or the raiders lose, uh, stealing anything from the house. Because one of the worst things that can happen early on in the game is you start to have uh, food stolen from the house. The raiders tend to take valuable things like food, water and meds. But also if we get um, somebody injured, because one of two things can happen. One, you're going to get things stolen from the house. Or secondly, you're going to get somebody injured. And if somebody gets injured, you're going to need bandages. So either eventuality. Uh, security is quite important. So it's uh, best, if possible, to avoid that. Given that we can get three boards in on the first day. And we, we can have two guards. That is... Um, the, the raids at the beginning of the game are quite weak so the raid tonight won't be very strong um so probably one guard and three boards will be enough but we've got two beds so i don't think there's any reason to uh, skimp on security so we just put two guards up that way 100 percent guaranteed no problems now let's just get um anton down here and see what next so i'm just looking at the temperature here 16 degrees now, 15 is the cutoff, because if the temperature at the end of the day goes below 15, it means that we have an increased risk of somebody getting sick. And we're close to 15 here, and that tells us that winter isn't far off. Doesn't mean that it's going to be coming in the next couple of days, but it's not that far off. So we're going to have to think about winter management, and that's getting heating a heater in. So let's just get Sveta to sleep anyway. That way everybody is rested by the end of the day. So if we just get Anton to the workshop here, so we're going to have to put one of these in before too long. But we've got a few days before we um, before that becomes important. So there's nothing else we want to do today. The next thing that we probably want to do is if we want to secure 
the house completely, we would need to upgrade this. And that is five parts, wood and components. So they are the three things that we will be needing the most. Now, um, Franco did not come today. He uh, can potentially come on day two. Not that often, but it's possible. And 11 a.m. is the cutoff for visitors, so we're well past 11 a.m. So it means that nobody's coming today. So we can, in fact, end the day here because everybody's rested. If we just look at Pavel, we just look at Anton. Yeah, we can end the day here, leave the other two in bed. Now, if we look at what we want to do, it's really components, wood and parts. Now, we'll be getting potentially getting this from Franco tomorrow, but the trouble is we need something to buy it with. And if we look at look at our things, we've really got nothing to use for trade apart from the diamond. We don't get the port exit option, so we can use that to trade. So it means that we're going to be on a med hunt tonight. So let's end the day there. Now, we've got two new locations. That's Sniper Junction and the Military Outpost. So, we don't have a weapon, so we can't go to the Military Outpost because that would be an option if we kill some soldiers there. There's an awful lot of stuff we could bring back, including a lot of food. And we've got four mouths to feed, so that could be an issue. But we would get a morale hit there, which um, is manageable. Because what we could do, for example, if we had a weapon, is go here, kill some soldiers, get a bunch of stuff, take the morale hit, but then go here, and this one provides a morale boost. So that would be an option. And this one also provides a morale boost. But this is the best one to do tonight. Because um, there are a ton of meds there. So that's what we're going to do. Now, um, there's also a site where um, Pavel has an advantage. You could do that. You can do this with any character, apart from Boris, who's the slow one. So there's no particular advantage with Pavel, except for maybe less likely to get shot. But we'll see when we get there. Now um, she's slightly sick, so we're going to put it, leave her in bed. Um, we'll put her on guard. We'll put him on guard, just because we can. And we we've got two beds. So we'll be able to sleep everybody off tomorrow. This guarantees that there are going to be absolutely no issues if there is a raid tonight, which I think there is. He's going to scavenge, and what we want to do is take one. There are two saw blade requirements there, but we really only need one to get access to what we want to get access to. So let's go there. So this is Sniper Junction. So you just run up to this uh, ledge here, and you're going to hear a sniper firing away. Now, immediately after the shot, run to cover here. Same again. As soon as you hear a shot, run. So this is cover again, next shot. Last one is here. So wait for the next shot. And one more, next shot. Okay, and the first thing we want to do as soon as we're inside is run up here and we want to unblock this door here. Because there's a guy up here who wants to get access to his baby, which is over in the main block here. And we get a morale boost for this. So now he'll bagger back and uh, we'll hear a crying child in a moment. So I'm just gonna pick up stuff here. Just while we are here. And I'm gonna consolidate everything into this pile here, which is kind of central. And then we're going to go up with our saw blade, the first saw blade requirement. As mentioned, there are two, but we're only going to do one because it gets us access to what we want to have access to. But also a question of timing. I'm not sure we would have access to, sorry, I'm not sure we would have time to do, to go pick up the piles that the second saw blade requirement here would um, enable us to do. We can do that in the future, but the important stuff is um, in this, actually on this floor here, but we'll pick up this up here first anyway. 
Because we can get everything consolidated down into that one pile by about three o'clock, which gives us a couple of hours to get them. So I guess this is one location where Pavel's speed, speed advantage actually does come into play, both to avoid the sniper shots, but also because this is quite a big location. So just um, as an interim consolidated pile. I'm just going to put everything into here. And then I'll ferry everything down a little bit later. So I'm going to keep going here doing what I'm doing and then I'm going to get everything down into this one pile here and I'll be back once I've done all that. So we've got about two o'clock and we're just getting back with a couple of final items from the upstairs area. Now there is one other area which is over here where we want to go because there are some meds at the back here. So again just going to pick up all of the stuff along this line put it back into our consolidated pile. So at 3 a.m we've now picked up everything and got it all into this one pile here. There's just one thing left to do. So three o'clock, we've still got time to get home. So we just have to go see the guy and he will give us a message here saying, there's a box under the bed, take as much as you need. It takes a second or two for it to spawn in. Just gotta wait. There it is. And that's five diamonds. So let's go. Um, 3.30, we've got one and a half hours to get home, which is fine, especially as Pavel's fast. So now the question is, what do we take home? Firstly, these are all the meds we picked up. So these are full stacks. So we've got two, four, six meds there. Do we want to take two cans? Not sure. I'm going to take, uh, not that. I'm going to take this med here. So now we've got lots of med for trade, but also we don't get the port exit in this scenario. So there's no other use for diamonds other than trade. So we're going to take those four for trade. So that's our trade now because we're expecting to see Franco on his normal day. His normal days are days three, six, and nine. It's not guaranteed there can be some variation in that. Now, rest of it. Um, we saw that we had a need for parts, components, and wood. I'm going to take these because it's always good to have parts. Sometimes Franco doesn't have any. So those eight will meet our immediate needs. And then it's just a question of, um, I guess, three stacks wood. Pretty random here. I shall take the cans. That might play a part. I don't think we're going to be finding any more food here other than what we see here. And this is going to be important later, I think. So we're going to go there because we've now got enough to buy Franco out, specifically with the meds, but also the diamonds. And that's the important thing if we see him tomorrow. So let's get home. So to get home, we don't have to go across the top now. We've got a fast way up. So we only have uh, two sprints to do. So I think it's probably about here. And then we wait for the first shot. Into cover, next shot. And we're at home, 420, and yeah, we're good. I'm going to end it there as we're running quite long, and I'll be back for the next part where hopefully we will cover days three and four, and maybe five time allowing. And thanks for watching. Bye.